killer. Yo, what's going on guys, it's Gamer here, bringing you another super review today, we're, we're reviewing super, uh, super episode 104, titled, A Faster Than Light Battle Begins, Goku and Hits Joints Front. I want to apologize really quick if you hear anything in the background, because right now my neighbors are partying, I guess, very late at night, if you're wondering what time it is, it's around 2 o'clock when I'm recording this, so I apologize if you hear just any noise in the background but I hope that doesn't take away from the video of course but anyways uh, super episode 104 a lot of people may find a lot of controversy behind this episode specifically uh, with how fast the speed of dispo is and hit uh, and all this other crap and of course uh, Su Super Saiyan God of course with the return and how it was basically brought back so, the episode starts off with where it ended in last week's episode of Dispo and Hit. They're getting ready to fight, and uh, obviously Dispo knows who Hit is. He knows that he has the time skip, and Dispo actually tells Hit that he knows how to basically, you know, beat the time skip. He's figured out a way how to beat the time skip, and obviously this is done off screen so because we didn't see how he was able to do it. But of course, uh, the fight starts off with kind of like a long stare down as most fights do uh, for some reason. But Dispo goes in for a charged in attack, go, uh, hit, tries to use his time skip and it doesn't work. Uh, Dispo actually was able to uh, hit him, iron unironically, uh, before Hit was able to use the time skip. And the reason behind why he was he's able to counter a lot of Hit's time skip maneuvers is because uh, his, his ears can, you know, hear frequency sound waves coming from the tightened muscle joints of Hit using the time skip. And what I find kind of surprising, but almost not surprising at the same time, uh, is that Dispo and Hit are moving so quickly that not even the two Zenos uh, that are watching the tournament can see what's happening. So what what was what, what was really funny I found was that. Um, what's it called? The Grand Priest, the Dai Shinkan, had kind of put in like this other thing uh, on like the God Pad or whatever it's called, so that way they're able to see what happened at that instant and then basically put it in slow motion. And something else that happened uh, a little bit after uh, uh, Dispo had gotten the first attack on Hit is that I guess the show became self-aware of the fandom and noticing that Dispo looks a lot like Beerus and Champa. And so, uh, Champa then points out the fact that Dispo looks a lot like Beerus, uh, to Vados. And Vados is like, well, then that means he looks like a lot, a lot like you, Champa. And that was really funny. I thought that was really, really hilarious because I guess the show is, became self-aware. It was really funny. Uh, I enjoyed that very, very much. Uh, of course, we get back to... Uh, a lot of fighting scenes between Dispo and Hit, which was the main focus for the first half of the episode. It really wasn't anything else besides maybe a few cutaways to uh, like maybe like Beerus or just some of the gods of their general reactions of what's going on between the fight between Hit and Dispo, of course. Um, just all everyone's just immediately surprised. Uh, the rest of the Pride Troopers that are there, that are still on the arena, are watching it. Hit's getting the hang of how Dispo is being able to, you know, counter the, the time skip, of course. And then we get all these, we get all this great music. We're getting all this great action scenes of what's going on. Uh, just before, uh, I guess, the show goes into commercial, um, Hit is at the edge of the arena. And it seems like Dispo is going to be able to knock him off, but then uh, Hit uses some kind of form of after image technique. Dispo goes straight through Hit. And it seems like he's about to get knocked off. And like I said, they go in the commercial break, I guess. And uh, Kunshi, I want to say that's, that's what his name is. Uh, the little green dude of the Pride Troopers. He has like energy lasso or fucking whatever uh, through his hands. And so he used that. Yeah, Kunshi, that's what his name is. Uh, he shot out like lasso energy uh, things coming from his hand. And had basically saved Dispo from falling off of the arena. 
Uh, after that, uh, Dispo and Kunshi decided to actually team up against Hit because, um, you know, Dispo with his speed and then the Hit being able to, you know, counter that after realizing uh, what he can do to counter Dispo. Uh, Kunshi's there to basically, like, lasso up Hit so that way he can actually, uh, you know, get into some kind of trouble so that way Dispo can be able to get a couple of hits in there. Uh, Dispo's hitting, uh, hitting hit, uh, a lot, actually. He's hitting him with a barrage of attacks. And then we see this fiery blaze come out of nowhere. And, of course, if you've seen the latest leaks that have come out in, uh, the recent few coming days, not coming days, but the last few days, uh, you would know that Super Saiyan God, uh, planned on making a return into Super, and that's exactly what happened. Super Saiyan God had finally appeared into the series, uh, since the since the Battle of Gods arc and the Battle of Gods movie even and that made me really happy but I feel like now wasn't really the the best time to introduce Super Saiyan God I guess because even against Universe 9 with the trio of dangers uh, Goku never really decided to use Super Saiyan God you know kind of just uh, restrain his stamina but also have you know, the power capability to be able to knock them out of the arena. Only now has he decided to, you know, kind of use the Super Saiyan God transformation. And, uh, unironically, what they decided to do, uh, between the conversation between Beerus and, uh, Whis, is that they decided to basically do, they basically decided to do what Toyotaro did in the manga for Dragon Ball Super, uh, in the Goku Black arc, actually. Uh, basically, Toyotaro brought back the Super Saiyan God transformation and also introduced us to Super Saiyan God Vegeta. Uh, and basically what Vegeta and Goku did in the Goku Black arc in the manga was they were in their Super Saiyan God transformation. They basically conserve a lot of their power and stamina and then they would transform into their Super Saiyan Blue form. They basically get that extra amount of power increase to be able to you know, deal a lot of damage. And for the rest of the episode that Goku is on screen, he is actually doing that from different scenes that happen in the manga. He would charge up, he would charge at uh, just someone like Dispo, and then whenever he needed that additional strength of power of, of Super Saiyan Blue, uh, he would then go ahead and transform into Blue for a quick second, and then be able to get a hit on him that did a lot of damage. And then he, was, and then he would resort back to Super Saiyan God, or Super Saiyan Red, however you want to call it, I've heard it. I've heard it call I've already been called in many different ways. Uh, you know, then he would resort back to that transformation, basically conserve his stamina. So Goku shows up, Goku's just like uh, you know, he's not even really there to help him. Like hits actually like, I don't need your help, and then Goku's like, Nah, I wasn't really here to help anyways. <laughs> and then uh Goku decides to go after Dispo. Um uh, uh, Kunshi, Kinshi, I forget what his name is already. Uh, Kunshi uh, goes after Hit. Uh, immediately, Goku's already fighting Dispo, and this was so fast that Goku doesn't have enough time to be able to uh, basically active, uh, not activate really, but use uh, the instantaneous movement or instant transmission. But of course, uh, this is Goku, and he he has you know Super Saiyan Blue and all. He's able to you know gain the advantage of being able to outspeed uh, Dispo. I'm running out of breath. I apologize. Uh, we're, uh, we're in the middle of seeing a scene between Hit and, and Kunshi. Uh, Kunshi sends up like a minefield of like the lasso thing or whatever. I don't really know what to call it. Uh, he sets up basically a minefield that's explosive. So if Hit decides to move, it'll explode. Uh, Goku shows up right beside Hit. Hit's like, hey, how about we trade places? So they trade places. Uh, Hit's going after Dispo. Um, Hit gets a lot of good clean hits on Dispo. Excuse me, and Hit is is clearly already like adjusting to, you know, how to counter Dispo and his speed and you know hearing, but like vibrations in his ears and shit, you know. So basically, what he does is that he he uses basically, I guess you can call it a false time skip, where he uses the same muscle movements of being able to use the time skip. But he doesn't actually do it. He used it to basically lure in Dispo, so that way he'd be able to get a clean hit on on him. So of course I'm running out of breath again. I apologize. So of course uh, Hit is doing really really well against Dispo. Uh, Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue because he knows is the minefield on the ground from Kunshi. Uh, he goes Super Saiyan Blue to basically activate all the explosions. Goes after Kinshi. 
He punches him right in the gut, sends him into a wall, and shoots up a barrage of key, uh, key blast attacks. So, you know, he, he's basically just kind of like there, but not really doing anything. Again, Hits getting a lot of clean attacks. Uh, Hits basically telling Dispo, like, you might as well go ahead and, you know, get yourself knocked off the arena, and then it won't be whatever. Uh, he, he does uh, the whole barrage of, like, uh, attacks that he did against Vegeta back in um, the tournament of Universe Six versus Seven, uh, in the whole Champa arc or whatever. I guess we I don't know I don't really know what to call that arc, but I guess I'm gonna call it the Champa arc. I guess he does the same thing that he did against Vegeta on on Dispo, which I thought was really cool. Uh, hit decides to grab Dispo by the ear and just basically chunk him off or chuck him off, right? Uh, Kunshi's like, nah, mate, I'm gonna fucking save you, and then I'm gonna let you retreat back, so that way, you know, yeah, so Kunshi gets knocked off, uh, so that means there are only three fighters left of Universe 11, and I'm not gonna lie, uh, I expected, uh, obviously, Topo and Jiren to basically survive as long as they are, they're probably gonna be one of the last fighters to basically be a part of this, uh, this whole tournament of power. But I was honestly expecting a lot more fighters of Universe 11 to still be on, you know, the tournament stage, but they're not. Uh, so the whole episode ends off of, you know, kind of hit thanking Goku and saying that he's going to fight him later on. He's going to spare him, quote unquote, and all this other crap. They kind of just leave each other alone, I guess. And then the episode ends off with the announcer saying that we only have 35 minutes left until the end of the tournament of power and uh something that i found weird i saw this in uh actually geeked in 101's comment uh, comment se section is that obviously he was confused that a whole like half an hour episode is going to equal to the amount of time there was left in last week's episode which is 37 minutes uh obviously he didn't understand that but he did say that, that like the whole like episode of episode 104 was you know a whole two minutes and I feel like if these guys are you know faster than the speed of light and sound I feel like it shouldn't have really been that long of a fight but there were some instances where it did seem like it was uh, where it would make it a little bit longer than a whole two minutes of however long the fight was so it's kind of like whatever I'm not gonna really like you know say anything about it and a lot of people are going to be confused. Uh, no, Super Saiyan Blue is still superior to Super Saiyan God. It's uh, superior in terms of strength and speed, but in terms of like conserving stamina, it's obviously uh, not better than Super Saiyan God. Uh, what else? What else? A lot of people are going to be uh, kind of are going to say that this is controversial, saying that Dispo is faster than the speed and uh, is faster than the speed of sound and light. A lot of people are going to be kind of annoyed at that. I, I can already see it. I can already see a lot of people being upset with that. But whatever. Uh, the episode was very enjoyable in my opinion. Uh, if you want to like, be controversial about a lot of things that happen, go ahead and do it. But don't hate the episode because of reasons of what happened. The episode was very enjoyable. The music was really good. Uh, the fighting scenes were really good. Even though a lot of it actually was reused animation. Uh, but it was good reused animation, you know, so it's kind of whatever. I like the episode uh, You know, of course the the writing was very very good for uh, You know what the characters had to say to each other and all that other crap I'm, I'm rambling on if you guys enjoyed the video Please be sure to drop a like and if you want to see more videos like this, please be sure to subscribe uh, I plan on bringing out a couple of different videos that you may or may not see on the channel in the next coming days. Some of it has to involve with a lot of uh, YouTuber drama maybe. I'm thinking about doing it. I'm not entirely sure if I really want to do it. And then I'm thinking of also doing another project video kind of like the, the top five video that I did a, a couple days ago actually. Uh, I don't know, sure, I'm not sure what it's going to be on or what it, the video is actually going to be. But please be sure to look out for that of course in the near future. Anyways. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.